Hello viewers, it's Beloved's Corner. We have come your way with interesting topics today too. Um, for some time now, people would want to know a few of the problems they have encountered in their relationship, how they should have gone about it, and if they are now experiencing it, how they should also go about it. And um, for me, the questions that has been running through the minds of people is this. What if you have agreed, that the gentleman has agreed to go with the lady and the lady has accepted the proposal and they have started friendship and they, ha they have plans getting married. If for nothing, soon, not than they thought, they want to be together. But then here comes this ugly um, problem. That's the, one of the parents on either side or one side says that, no, I won't allow you to be with my daughter. I won't allow you to be with my son. How do you go about such a problem? In fact, it's a difficult situation. It's a very, very difficult situation. Earlier on, I kept saying that before you even propose to a, a lady, make sure you become the lady's friend and go into the family. Become friends with them. Let them know who you are. Let them know what you are capable of doing. Let them have confidence in you. And if you didn't do this, but then you have found love and you want to express it and you want the spouse, um, the, the in-laws to be, to accept you. I think what you have to always be doing is to pray towards that day that you're going to be introduced. To start praying from the day that both of you agree. That is if you didn't um, involve the parents from the beginning. Now that they have to introduce you, you have to pray. You have to pray. I know of um, they are now married. They've been married for the past uh, 15 to 16 years now. The guy had to fast for 24 hours because he had heard so much about the in-law, how troublesome the man can be, and the, the um, requirements that he had put in place for whoever wants to marry any of his daughters. So this gentleman had to do a serious spiritual exercise. And then when he got to the house, even though he didn't have the cars that the man wanted, he didn't have the money that the man was expecting, but he agreed to this uh, idea. And now they are happily married and they have so much. And the in-law now sees that the guy is a blessing to his family. So what I would advise is that if you have started moving and you have plans of settling and you have this opposition, I think you can involve your pastors, the pastors who know you, the people who know you, to speak on your behalf, to, to try and convince them because you need the blessings. No two ways about that. You cannot go and marry your wife and be happy when the parents are not in favor. If you have just one side opposing, then you can talk to the other party who is in favor to try to convince the other, um, the one who has a problem. I'm saying this because you need their blessing. You need their blessing to prosper because we are to honor our fathers and our mothers. And this comes with a promise. So young people out there, if you are facing such a position, pray about it and then take up the matter to your pastor or the counselor or people who the, uh, your in-laws to be respect so much and then prove yourself. When these things do happen and they finally agree and you don't live up to expectation, then you are letting other people also follow their hearts when it comes to these things. I know of a couple who, when the gentleman was about uh, marrying the lady, the family opposed them because he said, I don't like the stripe. They are too bossy. They are this, they are that, they are that. And lo and behold, this guy disappointed the lady after they had moved on for over 17 years. So please, let us show respect to our parents and when you realize that they've started opposing you have to pray that the lord will prove them wrong when you know very well that you really care for their daughter or you care for their son and you would want to be a good husband or a good wife to their son or daughter so please it's something that comes up once in a while but if it's not for any tangible reason of mis misconduct or rudeness or anything that has got to do with abuse, please, and it's that they look down upon you, pray that you would prove them wrong in the long run and work hard to also improve upon yourself. If they are able to tell you the reasons, 
then make sure if it's within your power, if it's within your limit to, um, to, to be able to prove them wrong, do your best. If it's education that they have problems with, improve upon yourself. After all, there's a president in Africa here who was refused to uh, be given the nod because they thought that he was just a simple footballer. But this man proved himself and he went ahead to become who he wanted to become. Now it is a plus for him. Why not? There's always the opportunity to work hard, to improve yourself, to make your doubters know that you are a man who is capable of doing what he says he will do. It's one of those problems, but it doesn't mean that the relationship should end abruptly. Take your time. And when it happens that you have to separate, please do that with all respect to both sides. Because at times after separation, they realize that this person is good after all for my daughter or for my son. So then they would come and then um, change or go back on their words and say that we said this before, but now we know you are the best person for our, our child. So when it happens this way, don't give up. The main reason why there's no need for you to be having sex before marriage, to be kissing, to be hugging, to be fondling, is for some of these reasons. If you begin to do this and you face this opposition, you, you are heading for more trouble. So please, let us take our time in knowing our spouses to be, in knowing our in-laws to be, in knowing the people that we are going to see or ask uh, the hand of their daughter in marriage or their son in marriage. Let us respect the parents of our spouses to be. It's a good thing to be patient and to wait, to suffer long. After all, we know that Jacob had to serve for 14 years to be able to marry the one he loves. So we have seen that before. And he proved himself. He waited because he really wanted to marry Rahel. So I know that no matter how long it takes, patience will let you have what you want. Thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing. It's been your beloved Corner Channel. Thank you. We'll come your way again next time.